I spent part of the morning waiting for the pieces to dry, uh, you know, sponging down this display unit and uh, building some little uh, holders for my ladles, which I made a couple of years ago and I've never put out because I didn't know how to display them. So I just figured out a way of displaying labels. Ladles, not labels. Uh, I double-sided tape uh, a th two thick pieces of cardboard tape together uh, to make like a, a little shelf and then uh, cut little circles in, uh, they're more like ovals and the ladles stand up in there uh, and the double-sided tape is just adhering that piece of cardboard to the wall. So I think that's a pretty good solution. Um, maybe I'll actually sell some ladles now. Hi, I packed an entire kiln yesterday. I made 40 fish and I didn't get them all in this kiln actually, but that kiln is going to fire uh, over the weekend, so it will be the first firing of 2023, bisque firing, uh, and uh, this is going to be the last glaze firing unpacked in 2022. Um, so uh, I got some experiments in here, as you can see, not usual for me, uh, but I played around with sponging on some pots. These are some of the chattering balls that I did. Um, and that's pretty crazy. I think I should have done that in the 1960s, but um, crazy. And uh, but it was literally all done with sponges, just dipping sponges in glazes, glazes, and then just dabbing them on the pot. And now you can see the chattering coming through. And this is that purple glaze. Oh, that reminds me, I've got to send the recipe to somebody. It was in a book, um, so I'll just have to find the book. But. Um, but that, and I'm not quite sure, I think when I dab oatmeal over the top of the actual purple, I think we get this sort of dusty pink color, which is quite nice. Uh, it's a little bright for me, but um, but there's some nice colors in there, if I can ever remember. And I don't know what I did where I got the big, the blue, I'm assuming that's a dabbed in blue. But um, And another chattering bowl here, this one's nice, I like this one. A bit, a bit more subtle, and there's the chattering, really shows up well. Um, so uh, there's lots of potential with that. And here's the outside of the bowl. And this is just my regular chun green with um, other glazes, probably the apple green dabbed over there with some oatmeal. But that really shows the chattering up, and I think somebody wanted that recipe as well. I think I'll post the recipes in this firing this video another one of the purple glaze and that's nicer than the other one I think but still it's got some kind of interesting kind of color combo dusty pink is my guess oatmeal over purple gives you dusty pink and then on the inside it's a little less crazy but uh, nice i'm not quite sure once again which glazes i dabbed over the top i was just playing so no i don't think there's any oatmeal in there obviously but except for on the rim there's some oatmeal and i know that's oatmeal because i remember doing the rim actually this was just a baking dish i had left over from a previous uh, group of these that i made and this is harris ten maku in a firing that's not Randy's red firing. This is uh, slow cool still, but it's not the same. So you don't get the red as much. Um, and I did sponge over the top of it as well. So, um, but, um, but you've got some interesting browns breaking to black in the center there, which I like and all that. But if we do a longer firing with this, like the Randy's red firing, you do tend to get some little reds coming through. But that's a nice tender coup. the chattering balls. I'll take pictures of these because they're turning out quite nice. Uh, chattering on the rim upper half there and some sponging on the bottom. Um, that's got to be blue or variegated blue is my guess. And that gave a nice turquoise look. And then on the outside, yeah that's nice too. The chattering gives you a nice surface texture to look at, well texture to feel and surface variation to look at. Can't tell if you're seeing it actually. But that's a nicer combination of colors I think for this. The spiral was a bit too 1960s. 
whether that's a nice ball. And then the, the coffee bar in the home bay orders a lot of mugs for me and he wanted a bunch of purples because it's a new color and he wanted to try a bunch of them. So I made him a bunch of these and I did various things on them to make them all a little different, di different dips on the top, but it's all basically the purple, which I'll photograph the page in my glaze book and put it into this video. So these are all that same simple glaze and some of them have some variations. And I always use a white or oatmeal on the inside of these. All my mugs I like to have a light interior to them, unless I'm in a big rush and then I'll just double, just dip it right in. But usually I like the light interior. I think the customers like that because they can see whether it's dirty. But remember, as people get older, their eyesight fades and they'd like to be able to see things more clearly. Here we go, that's that level of the kiln. Okay, here's another Chun Green. And this is, all of these pieces are on the speckled clay. Um, and my next batch of pots are all going to be with the recycled clay from that pug mill video I just did. Um, and uh, we'll see whether somebody wants to buy that. My other one is not going to come till the end of March at the earliest. They say there's a huge backlog, people ordering pug mills. It's amazing because they're so expensive now. But that's a nice chattering ball with the apple green and oatmeal over the top of the chun green. Pugmill is something that um, I, you know, I don't recycle a lot of clay. I mean, I think I use my pugmill 12 hours a year, but when you need it, it saves you a huge amount of wedging. And I had carpal tunnel on my hands, you know, surgery because of uh, carving black and white pieces, basically, because, uh, you know, I've never wedged very much, but people who wedge are probably going to be getting carpal tunnel, I'm sure because that's a lot of stress on the wrists and the shoulder. That's a nice for chattering there. But when you need a pug mill, you need it, that's for sure. <coughs> and here's a turquoise one. So I mostly did all these pieces in the transparent glazes because I'm trying to show the chattering up. The chattering in the middle of that one was in the, in the video I did, it was very subtle. Uh, you see the edges, but the middle bit has sort of faded out. Um, but this is a turquoise glaze. That's quite nice. The way the sponging kind of mellows the edge there a little bit. It's a very speckled clay body, this one, so. And then more purple. He's got 14 of these, I think, in here. This will be my last sale of the year. I think he's ordered 30 of these brown mugs and I think 14 of these. I, mean, I think you'll probably pick them up on Saturday, which might mean it's my last sale of the year. Nice mugs though. It's, it's a, a nice addition to my glaze vocabulary. It's variegated blue and oatmeal over the top of most of these, although I did do apple green and oatmeal over some of them. Okay, the last layer of the kiln at the bottom is more of the blue, green, copper, red turquoise pieces. Uh, and I put the matte turquoise, uh, which I call jade now, and some oatmeal in the center. And on the outside, I reversed that and did the color on the upper half. And you can see the chattering, but I think this glazed is, is uh, better over the white clay than the speckle for the chattering to show up. It still shows up a little bit. You get a nice, in the light, you get that kind of glint from the sunlight on the piece or the fake light. And here's the same glaze over white clay. Glaze, same again. And I think you can see, if we can get it to show up right, you can see the chattering more through this clear transparent turquoise. 
and very obviously on the outside you can see it. So we'll remember the transparent turquoise, which I call blue, green, copper, red, because it will go red in a gas kiln, uh, is actually better over the white clay. And here's another one of a much more subtle of the spiral effects. On the outside again, showing the chattering. And then I have a few more of the goblets that we looked at in the other firing. You can just see the brush marks. I did vertical brush marks in variegated blue and oatmeal over the top of the Harris Tenmaku. So I think this lady has a lot to pick from. I think I've made probably 16 of them for her to pick 10. They turned out very nice. And I did these out of B-mix clay too, um, which doesn't generally like to go above the cone five, but it worked fine in this, these firings. You know, it's, uh, you can see our rings. Nice ring. So this is a speckle clay, dark blue, with um, variegated blue over the top. It's interesting it did that there and not on the other side since they were glazed almost the same. But uh, the dark blue over speckle clay is always a little dull, I think. But um, there you go. Put that one on my other kiln there. Same again here, dark blue, variegated blue. Oh, wow. Look at the chattering, though. I think you can see that. So the dark blue is a transparent, and it shows the chattering up very nicely. And the purple is usually good for chattering. That's over speckle clay. And look how the very <laughs> oatmeal over the purple gives you that dusty pink, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then you've got the variegated blue here. So that's the basic oatmeal there. And yep, chattering looks really good. Shows up very well. Nice color. This uh, purple is definitely going to be a keeper glaze. I'm selling it very well in the gallery too. It's brand new and people are buying the pieces. Same again. But the chattering, I get the light to catch it just right, really shows up well. And here's my little candy dishes. I'm gonna give people a little candy dish for Christmas in my local community here. The chattering showed up very well on that one too. bunch more little drinking glasses. This is the Harris Tenmaku. Um, I'm playing with it just to see if it's uh, going to give me some reds even into a regular firing. And it's uh, didn't do it there, did it? So this is the Tenmaku Gold, variegated blue over the top and the speckled clay. Testing this is always a bit better to do over white clay anyway. Then with the gold again, although it's very pretty. And this is the bright blue. Oh, that's not pretty. Bright blue with variegated blue and oatmeal over it. They're just little tumblers, basic, feel comfortable in the hand. I've been waiting for this. I've got a berry ball that needed that. And here's the purple with variegated blue. My wife said she wanted to have bright Christmas balls. I think we've got pretty bright, don't you? That's my basic yellow, and um, it looks good. Uh, yeah, you can see the chattering through it. It's a little bit um, opaque. Just see the chattering a little bit. But the green looks good with the yellow. There you go, two more of each of those. And this is over the white clay, which is why the colors are so bright. And the Chun Green, look at that. Beautiful Chun Green. 
That's what I was hoping. The white clay really made this look. It's not so great over the speckled clay, but that is a really pretty green over there. And that's got uh, apple green above it, which also looks really nice with the Chun green. Same again. Couple of purples. We just saw some of these. These have got the uh, blue, uh, variegated blue. I think it was over the purple, but um, I wonder if I did regular blue, or it could have been matte turquoise even. Oh, look over the rim. It's the matte turquoise. Yep, there you go. So matte turquoise, which is very nice. And this, of course, we've got really nice chattering marks there. There's the matte turquoise with the variegated blue. And the chattering shows up nicely through the matte turquoise too. Two more Chun greens. Uh, if you can see it, there's a nice line of sort of a yellow edge where the greens meet the Chun together, the Chun and the apple green. That's a nice little crystal line there, but um, they're very nice for the chattering marks. I've just got two new chattering, sorry, I think four more chattering tools from Bill uh, Wright. Um, it's artisanpotterytools.ca. Um, these tools are great, I love them. Should do some big pieces next year with the chattering on too. Uh, somebody asked me about the firing schedule with this because it turns out so well. Um, it's a slow cool, 175 degrees an hour down to 1750 with a half an hour soak. You can let it go down a little faster between 2200 and uh, 30 degrees down to uh, 2000 at 300 degrees an hour, but then 175 slow and you get those crystals forming in those glazes. There's a lot of nice blue in that one. And then the, the Tenriku gold. Um, same here, consistent. Only a 15 minute soak at top temperature though, otherwise the glazes run over the edge. We, if you look back in my earlier videos, I got lots of problems with glazes running and we are able, able to control it right to the edge, no more than 15 minutes soaking. But that's a really pretty bowl. A couple of bright blues, always looks good in white clay. And there's the chattering showing up on the bottom of that one too. And again here, really nice. I think I'll be making some sets of bowls for my, my gallery. My wife has first dibs on all of these for Christmas presents. Nice chattering with a variegated blue over the top. And there's a little tumbler in the speckled clay. Bright blue, variegated blue and oatmeal. Same again, stilts come off really easily. Same again, bright blue, variegated blue oatmeal. And then we've got some Tenmiku gold again, but with speckled clay, it's a little less spectacular than it was over the white clay. You still got some gold flecks, but it really does need a pale clay body for the Tenmiku gold. Another one there, variegated blue and oatmeal over the Tenmiku gold. Another one of the dark blue bowls, which is a little less successful. I'm, I haven't been able to get a really good dark blue. I had one for a while and I mixed two glazes together and it disappeared. <laughs> That's just uh, folk art white with apple green and some oatmeal. Same again, but the chattering shows up very nicely. One last more of these blue tumblers. Last layer down in the kiln. This was a refire. This piece 
I refired because it had a little bit of crawling on it and it turned out really good. We've got the nice crystals in the middle there. What I did is I dipped it with variegated blue over the chun green that way and that way and then a sweep of the oatmeal that way and that way um, and they blended and melted in the middle and you've got all those crystals formed in it. So that's a really really nice surprise since it didn't work the first time. Two more of these little shaving mugs. This is an order for somebody who wanted a shaving mug just so we could mix up the soap the old-fashioned way. Two more of the bright blue balls. Very nice. And two of the I've got a little bit of kiln shelf stuck on that one. It'll probably come off. Yeah, it did. I'll have to sand that off a little bit. Turquoise, matte turquoise. There you go, inside and outside. Okay, the next level down is all the same pieces. Um, the ones in the middle, because they are not close to an element, are red all the way around. And the ones near the outside are brown facing the element and then they turn to red rapidly as soon as it gets away from the element and we still haven't figured out exactly what's going on there i don't think it's the cool i soaked this for an hour at top temperature so it's nothing to do with that the heat itself it's something to do with the um whatever's given off from an element in the firing um, makes the glaze go brown well, so uh, maybe it i don't know Burns the oxygen out. Maybe there's less oxygen near the element, uh, but it's not an open flame. It's an electric element. Anyway, that's the next level down. Okay, the very bottom of the kiln, I can see something that's interesting. I don't use my fake ash glaze hardly at all. Um, um, because it's always been a little bit of a problem um, with bubbles and blisters sometimes. But look how nice it turned out here. That actually really looks like a fake ash glaze, uh, or an ash glaze, I should say. And I still feel like the texture isn't the greatest, but you know, ash glazes are like that. Um, so, um, so I think that did really well. I can't believe it did that. But um, and then on the outside, uh, the same type of thing. You would think that was fired in a wood kiln, I think. Yeah, so that's uh, that's got potential. Uh, also, this ball is one of the chattering balls. Not sure if the ash glaze works nicely to show the chattering though. Because um, the actual glaze has texture too. I mean, it's a really textural glaze. Quite amazing. I didn't expect that. I expected I have to refire it. Because <laughs> that's usually when they use that glaze. Then I did, there's some more goblets there. And then I did uh, the Harris 10 Maku. The same brush strokes that are on the goblets are on this bowl here. Um, and that is a beauty. Harris 10 Maku. Wow, this likes, you know, it really does like the long firing that you do with tomato red and also Randy's red. So all three of these should actually be changed the way I fire them to this type of firing profile. And you just look that up on the Randy's red and look at the outside. Chattering looks really nice. It's a nice texture. I wish that reflection wasn't there. Can't get, oh, there you go. That's a really nice texture from the chattering. Care of Bill Wright, artisanpotterytools.ca, no, dot com, that's right, artisanpotterytools.com. He keeps sending me nice tools when I'm playing with them. But, um, but Randy's red. Tomato Red and now Harris Tenmo Ku can all be used in this type of firing. You can find that profile in the Randy's Red videos that I did. And here's the same again. I sponged variegated blue and oatmeal in the bottom of this bowl. Um, but this is one where the texture from the actual 
chattering tools really shows up nice with Harris Tenmaku. Nice ball. Classic ball. And the texture on the outside, this is what I overboard, it went overboard with the textures. Just to see how far you could push it. It's worth playing. But the texture's amazing on it. And it says 20, is this one of the 2020? Yep, it says 2023. So this is from the future, as far as I'm concerned. And then we just have a bunch of more of these goblets. This is an order. She wanted 10 and I made 12. All right, that's enough for that firing, I guess. <laughs>